I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Randy McGray. Now, did I pronounce that correctly? You did, and and that is a bit of an anomaly that most people <laughs> ask me. Exactly how is it pronounced? Is it McGray or McGray? Yeah. And depending upon which side of the family or what part of the family you ask, you'll get a different answer, but I go by McGray, so that worked out perfect. That was wonderful. Hey, instead of going over one more time, I'll definitely leave that in there because it's just beautiful <laughs> the way you put the family in there. Yeah, so let's leave them there hey randy tell me what parts of the world are you in right now i am in orlando florida just actually north of orlando in altamont springs florida oh hey i heard it's getting cold there it was unusually cold yesterday right oh actually today was uh, overcast and really windy and my daughter and i were on a uh homeschool field trip to Kennedy Space Center and nearly froze to death. And I know that people that don't live in Florida laugh when you say it's, <laughs> you know, 68 degrees and breezy and you're freezing, but it's really kind of true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. Hey, hey, Randy, please do tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting? Well, I believe it's our mutual interests in podcasting is yeah, what I believe yeah. uh, caused our connection. Yeah, yeah. You know, podcast, family, family, podcast. It's it, they're, Exactly. They're both, yeah, they go hand in hand. So who did you learn this skill from? And t- tell us about your podcast. Um, I would say probably I learned this skill from just never learning how to ever shut my mouth. <laughs> and so most people, if you've known me long enough, there's probably been at least three times in the time that you've known me that you've said to yourself, I wish he would just shut up because <laughs> I've been known to talk a lot. The podcasting really started for me when podcasts started their resurgence a couple of years ago. My first job out of high school, my first job interview, I should say, was at a radio station. I wanted to be a DJ. I interviewed for a job at a small radio station in Wisconsin where I grew up. It was 24-7 polka. And I applied for the job, and I got it. Unfortunately, before I could actually start, the person who I was replacing turned down their job offer in Chicago and came back to the station, and I never did get to be on the airwaves, at least then. Um, And then after that, um, I was actually part of a talk radio show here in the Orlando area and was – and I've been asked to be on uh, numerous other shows and just really kind of got the bug. And then the church that I currently attend was looking for someone to help them do podcasting. So we just finished episode 73 last week. It's a weekly podcast. And we explore in greater detail the message and the topics we're talking about each week, along with our teaching pastors and some guests. And that's um, every Wednesday morning. It's out on iTunes and other places. Yeah, you guys have fun on that podcast. I love the realness of the conversation. So it's so okay. So it's Andy, or well, you are Randy, and then there's Jeff, I'm ra- right? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so. with Andy, Randy, and Jeff. The yeah. idea behind it was to anywhere in Orlando, pretty much your commute is going to be at least 15 minutes. So initially it was going to be a total of 15 minutes from beginning to end. And we found that if we did a little review and we looked ahead and we had a little fun, 15 was just not long enough. So we (laughs) actually try to keep the conversation at hand to 15 and then the rest, usually we land about 18 to 19 minutes. Yeah. Well, we're only two on this conversation and I have challenges (laughs) with 12, right? So I could well (laughs) imagine what goes on there, but yeah, definitely fun conversation. Totally enjoyed it. I'm having a grand opportunity listening to a variety of podcasts and um, uh, the production of, of what you guys do. It's pretty intriguing. You even mix in as well an interview model as well, right? So uh, one person takes the interview, right? And um, yeah, I, that was pretty intriguing. I write and uh, and script each episode. Doesn't mean we always follow script, as you know. Sometimes the conversation takes you in places you didn't possibly couldn't foresee and wouldn't expect. Yeah. And who, when we have guest speakers, uh, we are the Florida Hospital Church. So 
our sister organization, the Florida Hospital, is a big chain of hospitals within the Adventist Health System, which is nationwide. But we are right across the street from the largest Florida hospital in Orlando. So we've had their CEO, um, their CPO, and other people and some of the other executives who have spoken at our church who have then been interviewed uh, by me and about their message and a little bit of life in general gets thrown in there for good measure. So we've had some interesting guests as well, other than just the normal people that we see every week. Uh, which is excellent. Now, where's the best place for people to connect with the podcast? Other than iTunes, like point us to a website. Yeah, the website is www.hospitalchurch.org slash podcast. That takes you to our Spreaker page, which is a hosting platform for podcasts. And all of the archives are there and all the new episodes. Everything releases usually about midnight to 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays when I actually get done post-producing. We tape on Tuesday afternoon, and then once I'm done, it's usually a couple hours later before I actually get everything done and post it to the website. But they can also go to Facebook, and if they look, if they search for the hospital church on Florida Hospital Church on Facebook, we are actually starting a pilot. We're in our third week of doing a Facebook Live in conjunction with the podcast, Sweet. trying to attract more viewers yeah, and listeners. Like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, love yeah. it, love it. Yeah, you three sound as though you have a lot of fun. Like, wow, <laughs> I love the personality. How long have you been friends? I have known, I have known Andy and Jeff. All oh, shoot, I've probably known Jeff for probably fifteen years or longer, and Andy about the same time. I've probably known Jeff a little bit more in detail. Our paths have crossed more often than Andy and I's, but uh, of course, now that we, uh, I attend church there regularly, so the three of us obviously see each other at least once a week and it's yeah. usually more than that i also manage our mobile application for the church so i'm in usual pretty regular constant contact with all of the church staff yeah you're the guy you're the tech guy right you're the you're the two go <laughs> guy oh, that's good yeah tell at me, least in these weeks yeah tell me one other thing that you've done please consistently over the last three years something i've done consistently over the last three years well, probably something else that I've been doing is writing and scripting and looking for just doing some short stories of my own. I really haven't shared those with anybody, and they've been feeling like stepping stones towards my own podcast. I'm torn in a million different directions. I've been going to start my own. I've got a little home studio, and so I've been thinking of starting my own podcast. So I've written little bits and pieces, and I've tried out different, oh, I don't know, different ideas and different ways I could go. And I just, uh, I, I feel like I'm getting close. I feel like within the next couple of months here, I'm going to finally have everything whittled down to where I want it. And then I'll be launching my own personal podcast as well. Interesting. So how does it make you feel like when you, so just approaching the idea, right? is one feeling, but <laughs> how, does it, how does it make you feel to know that you're going to do this? Um, you know, I'm really comfortable with it. And it's it when I'm behind the microphone and it just feels natural to me to have conversations feel natural to me. Uh, the time I spent producing a TV show, which in essence was a lot like a podcast. We interviewed most of our guests via, at that time, Skype was out, but we found we used Google Chat a lot. And so we had interviews from, uh, we were based here in Orlando, and interviews from California, uh, across the pond in England. And so a lot of that kind of also went into that thought process and what's really kind of pushed this direction and me just, you know, kind of getting better with the technology, with the behind the scenes and just knowing what it takes to you know, script a good show and to ask the questions, but also let the conversation flow where it needs to and trusting that, you know, in the end, you've got what you need. So it's been, you know, it's been a little different way around than a lot of people have taken to get into podcasting, but it's my journey and I wouldn't trade it. Love it. Love it. 
Oh, suggest to someone out there that's listening, uh, someone that has the day job or who uh, is the person that's behind the scenes but definitely has a heart for something, why they should do what you've done by continuously seeking it out? You know, it's tough and it takes it takes commitment. It takes when you're tired and you're like, the last thing I want to do tonight is edit a podcast. <laughs> and the last thing I want to do is think about scripting the podcast or, um, you know, trying to figure out the details details when things don't work right, technology, but it's always been something that has been, like I said, even from high school, this was something that was a passion, something I feel that I'm pretty good at and something I just didn't want to let go of. And even though I went through 12 years as a financial advisor in a career that I really didn't care for all that much, but sometimes you got to pay the bills and sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. But in the meantime, when you, this was a respite for me. And so when I was thinking about this and dreaming about this and writing for this, and now that I'm actually doing it every week and I actually do some post-production on another podcast where I work. So all of these things put together, yeah, it's your personal time. It's your downtime that you might be able to do something maybe more relaxing, but if it's really something that you want to do, then you, you got to put in the time, you got to get better and you have to hone your skills so that when you get your chance, it comes out the way you want to and just the way you've dreamed. And so far for me, that's it's really kind of gone hand in hand that way. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. A word just popped up, right? Like, um, and I'm going to share it so you know. But um, lazaxing, right? Lazaxing as opposed to relaxing. So you know, <laughs> it's it's like the lazy relaxing, right? You when you do relax, it's really you refreshing, right? So that you could go again. And that I think yeah. there's a difference between relaxing and lazaxing <laughs> because there's some yeah. of us that really just uh, we're in a lazy zone, right? But um, I think what you're doing by I think what you're doing is relaxing and it's but it's it is some form of work. But you're refreshed, aren't you? When you when you when you do it, right? When you do it and when you actually see the results and you're putting in you're putting in that work, it's very gratifying. There's nothing more gratifying than actually starting something getting all the problems worked out in the middle and then at the end coming through with something exactly the way you thought it would be or better and knowing that it was your hard work, your perseverance and just sticking with it and putting in that time. There's there's really nothing more rewarding than that, even on a personal or professional level, at least for me. Yeah, yeah, for me as well. All right, well, amazing audience, we are live with Randy McGrath again. He is the podcast, well, the po- podcast co-host, but definitely the director and producer of 15 with Andy Randy and Jeff, do check that out. Pretty amazing stuff going on there. But Randy, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Randy, what is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, no, my earliest childhood memory. Oh, man, I can remember very, very early on that... um, being on the motorcycle with my dad, it's some of the best memories of my childhood. My mom was a nurse. She worked 3 to 11. And when we were on weekends and she was working and my dad, I was about three years old. And of course, you couldn't get away with that these days. There's laws and all that. But he would put a helmet on me and he would take bungee cords and strap them under my armpits and around my waist. And we would go to the race, uh, the local dirt track, auto racing. And my brother would ride with my uncle. And just the sights, the sounds, the smells, and just being with my dad is some of the earliest memories that I have. And they're still some of the best memories that I have. Wow, that's amazing. So why do you think this memory is so clear? You know, I'm not really sure. It's just my brother and I both talk about it still, that we remember names of the drivers that used to race back then and the, the smell of the track and the... Uh, just the experience. I think it was just um, didn't want to do anything more than I wanted to just do something with my dad. And so I guess that's why those memories have just stuck and maybe stand out more than others. That's intriguing. Hey, well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yeah. I love the idea of uh, what you can experience uh, through someone. And that looked like in your ex- your your scenario, 
like you're strapped onto your father, right? And he's riding and you're getting the experience that he's getting, right? Well, you're not getting to turn the throttle, right? But <laughs> you're getting so much more, right? By being able yeah. to look around. And it's intriguing to see that in the journey of the podcasting life, that you as well get that opportunity when someone shares their experiences and they share uh, what they've learned. It's like you're strapped in as well, right? Like you're strapped in and you're on the right you're you're sharing the story you you get that experience and the fact that you're doing that and you still love doing that is pretty fascinating to me well that's so funny that you mentioned it because i was just talking to someone the other day about you know they're like "Ah, podcasts you know i can take them or leave them i you know i prefer tv and i'm like oh man the spoken word when someone is taking you on uh, this journey with you know they're taking you along for the ride on this journey there's nothing better than that and you know and now that the whole you know taking on the ride on the motorcycle my oldest daughter she's old enough now she's uh of course i don't strap her onto the back of the bike she has a helmet and she's yeah. you know 11 years old she's big enough to go but it's something that i've passed on to her and she's actually homeschooling this year so wow. i am teaching her grammar this year and part of her to get an A in my class she's going to be writing a three to five episode podcast where she will be scripting it writing it and talking uh, and producing it and post producing it in order if she wants to get an A that's what she's got to do love it hey that's amazing that's amazing (laughs) if we fast forward Randy to when you were 12 years old what was your favorite song oh gosh 12 man you really are do you know how old I am (laughs) man that's a that's a you're asking me to go away back here let's see at 12 that would have probably been how old would i have been that would have been 1983 oh man that would have probably been something huey lewis in the news would probably have been my favorite song back then that was one of my favorite groups at that time yeah yeah well, there we go well hey it's amazing how these things connect right like you're, you're definitely <laughs> bringing the podcast news right <laughs> you got it you got it hey well, randy we've arrived at our destination but before we get off of this time machine there's a small declaration form so it's yes or no possibly a bit more we're going to go pretty quickly here are you ready randy i'm ready randy have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to yes are you married i am do you have children i do do you believe in god very much so do you have an inner circle of friends i do do you watch tv for more than three hours a day never how about three hours a week three hours a week yes what about screen time, the phone under the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? I'm a full-time video editor and podcaster, so yes, more than eight every, pretty much six days a week. All right, all right. Hey, after 1,001 Conversations in 2016, I came up with a workbook called Yours. It stands for your own unique real self. The idea is as you answer questions, you unveil your mission, your own unique real statement. If you had to share with us, Randy... Your own unique real statement. A statement that represents who you are. What would you say that is? Um, I would probably say that just be yourself in because that's your most authentic self. And people are drawn to authenticity. And now more than ever, authenticity is easier and easier to spot because there's just so much there's so much posturing and so much fakeness in everything that happens around us, particularly at least in my view in media. So Mm -hmm. if you can just be your authentic, true self, you're going to draw the people that need to be on your journey with you. And it's going to be way more successful, way more enjoyable if you take that approach than trying to be something you think somebody else wants you to be. Love it. Hey, Randy, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Follow your dreams. You know, everyone says, well, you know, sometimes you have to you have to pay the bills and the, your dreams don't always, you know, seem to make sense or pay the bills. But at the end of the day, there's a way to make both of those work. And it may not seem like there's ever light at the end of the tunnel or that there's a roadmap to get to where you want to go. But if you continue to polish your skills and let your passion for what it is that you want to do shine shine true, shine out, and just be authentic in the way you present that idea and you present yourself, you'll get to where you want to go. Love it. Randy McGree, hey, one more time. This was a great pleasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you for having me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. 
Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.